Just starting with level creation, learn the basics of levels and sublevels to get your world off the ground. This video is part of our Unreal Engine full course. Subscribe and check the playlist for more tutorials. During our previous lesson, we made some modifications to our level that resulted in asterisks appearing in different places on the screen. These asterisks indicate that changes have been made and need to be saved. To save the changes, I simply pressed Ctrl plus S. In the last lesson, we covered the creation of a simple scene to explore different items, interfaces and navigation systems available to us. In this lesson, we'll start working on our own project by creating our working level. As I said, we are currently on a level called Main, which is located in our content folder. And I also must say, that is our startup level. Essentially, a startup level is the level that will be shown to us when we open a project. We can change the startup level by going to Settings, Project Settings, Maps and Modes. Right now, you see that the editor's startup map is set to the main level map. Levels and maps will be used interchangeably in Unreal Engine. A rule of thumb is that you should never build your project on a startup map because you will be bringing in many assets and changing many settings while you are making it. There may be problems during the process and it will be very hard to open your level if a bug occurs. So don't build your project on the editor's startup map. However, you can change it later on when you finish the project. If you want to see where your startup level is located, you can do so by clicking here. You can also change your startup level here. But for now, we are going to build our project on a brand new level. Let's talk a little about what are levels. In simple terms, levels in Unreal Engine are like different rooms or areas in a house. Each level holds all the stuff needed for that specific part of a game or virtual world, like objects, scenery and actions. They help developers organize their work and make it easier to build big projects. So let's create one. I go to the content drawer and create a folder called levels inside my content folder. It's very important to keep your content organized, just as you keep the outliner organized, because it will be very hard to find your items if you don't have a good organization system for your project. To make a new level, you can go here and right click to create a new level from here. However, there is another way to create a level. You can go to the file menu and create a new level. I want to create a level from here because I want to show some templates that we have for levels. If I open it from here, you'll see four templates you can use to create your level. If you were to make it by right clicking in the content drawer, it would automatically go to an empty level. On the left hand side of your screen, you'll find two options to open the world in Unreal Engine. Two of them is the open world option, which sets in motion the world partition function that separates the level into partitions. This feature is particularly useful when creating an open world game since it enables different parts of the level to be loaded into the engine as players move around. However, using the word partition function means that you can't use sublevels, another great feature in Unreal Engine. So, if you're not making an open world game, you don't need to use the open world templates available here. The difference between a basic and an empty level is that in a basic level, they've already put some lighting in the basic version so you have a jump start. But I don't need them at this point. Let's just start with an empty level and I'm going to build the scene myself and even add the lights myself as well. So let's create a level. As you can see right now, the scene is empty and the outliner is also empty. Before we start, you see that the level is named untitled because we still need to save it. We can save it from here or hit Ctrl plus S. And as we do that, it'll ask us where we want to create that level. I go to the folder that I chose here and I'm going to pick a name for it. Naming conventions in Unreal Engine are very important. For every item I start right now, I want to make a level. So I start with a capital L and underscore, and I'm going to write the name I want to put for this level. I'm going to call it Abandoned. So let's call it L underscore Abandoned underscore version 01 to show it is the first version of our level. As we go through the training, we are going to save multiple versions at each step because in some cases you made a mistake and want to go back to the level version before that. So it's very important that you have multiple versions. Let's create the level. Now if you go to your content folder and inside the level folder, 
you see the level that you made. Again, you could create the level by right clicking and creating it from here as well. But right now, I don't need it. I wanted to show you the other way that was possible as well, because I wanted to show you the template levels that were available. So inside of our scene now, we don't have anything and the outliner is empty. Let's bring some lighting into the scene. I go to Window and select Environment Light Mixer. Inside the Environment Light Mixer, you can create any of these lights by clicking and creating all of them. This will create a simple dynamic lighting system. I will discuss these lights in detail, but they involve directional light, which represents the sun or the moon, as well as the atmosphere and clouds. Remember that when you start making stuff in Unreal Engine, just select all of them, right click and move them to a folder so you can start having a good organization system in Outliner. I will call it Lighting, so all of my lighting now is inside this folder. In later lessons I will start blocking out my scenes with some basic shapes. If I go to Quickly Add to Project in Shapes, I can bring all the shapes I need from cubes to spheres to cylinders to cones. Remember to have an organization system. You can just move them, and since I will put them in one folder, I will call it blocking. One point to consider is that the location of lighting items doesn't affect the scene. These are just representations of items inside the scene, so you can move them wherever you choose. I want to start building out my scene. I want to start with blocking, but before that, I want to introduce sublevels. We talked about making levels, but what are sublevels? If levels are the containers that hold everything we put inside the scenes, sublevels are like containers within those containers. For example, imagine you want two sets of lighting, one for night and one for day. You might think, okay, I'm going to put them in different folders. But as you get more advanced, this approach won't work. Because for instance, if you want to make an animation out of it, then you cannot hide one set with hiding the folder. Also, we are building our scene with blocking. This information is useful only for the first stage of our project, but it won't be needed later. So I'll put my lighting on one sublevel and my blocking on another. I go down to my content drawer and inside my levels folder, I make another folder, which I'm going to call SL, which stands for sublevels. I'm going to create three sublevels. For example, for daylighting, I'll use SL underscore daylighting. Then I'll make another for night lighting, SL underscore nightlight and another one for blocking, SL underscore blocking. As you can see, all of them have an asterisk, which means they need to be saved. I hit Ctrl plus S to save all of them. Then I went to my levels window and you see other than the persistent level, which is the main level, we don't have any sub levels. I can just drag and drop them here from the content browser. So every other level will be a sub level of this level. I also have to select all of these. Right click and change the streaming mode from blueprint to always loaded. The reason for always loaded is that it binds these together instead of the blueprint, which means you have to trigger it from inside to get this level loaded. The blueprint feature is useful for games. It allows you to save a specific set of environmental or lighting settings within the game. You can then load these settings using a command you create within the blueprint. For example, you could press a button to load the settings. However, using the always loaded option will cause these settings to be permanently linked together. When blocking is selected, I will select all of my items here, right click and move selected actors to this level. I can do the same thing for my lighting. I can select all of my lighting in the outliner, come back to the day lighting inside the level window and move selected lighting to this level. As you see, I have a level for lighting and another for blocking. Let's select the night lighting. When it is selected and active, everything I create goes to this level. I will turn off my day lighting and from the Windows menu, I select the environment light mixer again and another set of lighting. One important point here is that if I hold Ctrl plus L, click anywhere inside the viewport and start moving my mouse, I can change the direction of the light to create a night setting. You see, you can move around the sun and, for example, get some sort of night or sunset look. Now I can toggle between my day lighting and night lighting, but I don't want both of them to be activated because I have multiple directional lights in my scene. 
and you see that there are asterisks in front of all of them. So I go to the file menu, I see a control plus shift plus S, which will save everything. So I hit control plus shift plus S to save everything. Please note, if I select the main level right now and make a copy of the cube by holding Alt and moving the cube with the help of the pivot that you see. The copy will not be in the blocking level because it is not active but will be part of the active level. So, to make a copy, always stay on the same level. You have to come to the block, select the blocking level and then make your copy while you are at that specific level. Now as you can see it will be activated at the same sub-level. In the lesson on Unreal Engine, we covered creating and managing levels, including startup levels, organizing content, creating new levels, sub-levels, and dynamic lighting setup. Next, we'll focus on building scenes, starting with basic shapes and structures and expanding into detailed environments.